Welcome back everyone. The goal of today's episode is to finally get the AmpliTorque compartment all sealed up. So it might not be that long of an episode, but I will be happy to have it all done. So here's our bench full of components. I've got the glip tall coating on the insides of the castings as necessary. Technically, this front cover should not have even got any on the inside because Moline did not coat these at all. We are leaving the outside raw, but I do like having a good coating on the insides of these compartments because these tractors set a lot and, you know, condensation builds, it's just easier to keep everything clean. So we left off last time needing the thrust washer that goes between the flange of the input shaft and the thrust area of the cover. And I got the blank the other day, turned the OD and ID to size, and then I spent a lot of tedious minutes putting all these oil retention dimples all across both sides. And I didn't record any of it, but you all didn't miss much. It pretty much consisted of one turn, two turns, 15 little marks, one turn, two turns, 15 little marks, one turn, two turns, 15 little marks, over and over and over again. I have to admit, it did turn out to be extremely pleasing to the eye, but the reason why I put so much time into dimpling that the way that it is, is because Minneapolis Moline did that to all of their thrust washers during this time. Here's the original course that we took out last time. What is left of them is still present, but this is what all the thrust washers in a 445 production tractor look like. They are dimpled the same way on each side. Each one of those pockets holds a little bit of oil, just helps things to last that much better. So balance everything all precarious like, but that fits there very well. And when it goes in the cover, that's what our deal is right there. That's going to be the bearing. So we can start by putting the greased up input shaft in for the last time. Thrust washer next. And finally now the front cover. I've got the oil seal installed because I've done all of the in-play fitting off camera. And if you remember how this was set up, we had these six metal shims and a thin paper gasket between the cover and the case to get that positioned out far enough to get the desired eight to 15 thousandths in play clearance spec against that thrust surface. But because I renewed the surface in a very controlled manner, all right, I paid very close attention to what I was doing and how much material I was removing. I've set it up to where our new 1 8 inch thick thrust washer against our renewed thrust surface means that we can hit our desired in play spec by just using this single 40 thousandths thick gasket. So I was able to eliminate six metal shims from that stack height and this is the way I prefer to go if possible. Just a solitary gasket stands much less chance of leaking or seeping than a whole stack of shims. So I was pretty happy with how that turned out. So with our gasket in place, we can eliminate this 55 thousandths worth of additional stack height that we no longer need. And we're ready to put the front cover on. But first I want to address one quick bit of information. So under the last episode, a lot of people were uh, asking why I didn't just choose to go with the superior flat needle bearing for a thrust over a thrust washer. And here's the difference. So you can see there is the pocket for the bearing in the race. That's the size of it. When we compare it to the prototype cover, I would have to mill out just about that entire raised boss to be able to accept that bearing and race. And that's just too much. You can see a production one has a much more generous uh, area right there. It is definitely built for that needle bearing. Plus, I was able to retain as much of the original setup as possible by sticking with the thrust washer. All we did was make it a lot more capable. So that's kind of my goal with this is to alter any of the 10X prototype pieces um, in the least way possible. All right, if I really had to go with that needle bearing, I would have just used the production cover and stored this 10X cover away, leaving it uh, entirely intact. So. 
that's just how I choose to do it. There's an endless amount of options to overcome these problems. That's just kind of my approach. Okay, so to navigate around the camera and around the light, <laughs> gotta start this onto the input shaft and not hurt the seal. As you saw, I've got plenty of tape on there to protect it from getting cut on the splines. So we just go easy with it. There we go, past all of it. And this cover definitely likes to be clocked in a certain manner. So I found, I tried all eight positions and I found the braze repair up top with the 10X casting number about at the four o'clock position along with that second braze repair. That's where it wants to be. So that's where we put it. These covers are intentionally tight because they're made to self-align with the opening. So tapping it in is not out of the ordinary. And now we'll verify with the end plate check. Once again, production 445 tractor is eight to 15 thousandths right here. And before I greased it all up, we were running an honest 10. Now that I've got grease on everything, we're more like eight, but we are good. Okay, I know y'all can't see what I'm doing, but taking this opportunity to do the final adjustments on the over center clutch for the amplitor and I've got a good snap on it now you want to keep this clutch pack adjusted up plenty tight because when you're in high range your power flow is all going through that you don't want it to be slipping at all so through the top here is the easy way to do it now I'll show you the hard way and this is another interesting prototype detail with x231 it's got this large threaded hole right on the side of the transmission housing and that is your provision for going in here and adjusting that over center clutch so we'll see if we can get it spun around to where we can see the adjusting pin yep all right so get my pointer back here you can see i'm on the adjusting pin right up there so you'd take a long screwdriver depress the pin and then you'd take another screwdriver or a thin pry bar and turn on the spider ring until that pin popped into the next notch. And that is how you would adjust that over center clutch because once you place the top cover on, the dash bolts to that and the fuel tanks on top of that, it's way too hard to get in back through the top again. So of course X231 has this gigantic pipe plug that you would just replace after you're finished doing all those adjustments. And here's the interesting part. So we're on the prototype and we're working on the left side of the transmission. The production 445s had that adjusting hole on the right side in this area right here. And matter of fact, not all of them even had that. The early build 445s did not have a provision for going in through the side of the case to adjust that clutch at all. So how they had it on the prototype, which bear in mind too, this was not the initial Ampli torque setup that they had this may have been for something different and it just so happened to work out perfectly for the eventual design but in the manual here it shows we've got this diagram and it shows you how to locate and drill an inch and a half hole in relation to that ampli torque lever and the oil level plug so we'd be straight inch and a half hole no threads would have to be popped right there and it even says Dimensions for drilling a hole in the site of early production 445 series transmission housings for the purposes of adjusting the ampli torque clutch. Later models were factory fitted with the adjusting hole. So they didn't have any threads. They used this device right here. So we've got a bolt, we have a heavy stepped washer, and we have this crossbar, all right? And that bolt has threads on the end mashed over so that crossbar can't come off. And it was just that straight hole 
you'd hook the crossbar into it and then tighten the bolt down. That would run the washer tight against the outside of the case. The crossbar would cinch against the inside. Heavy cork gasket went around that step. That's how they sealed those off on all the productions. It seems like a real afterthought design to me, but that's what they used. Okay, we're getting down to the end of it. Once again, top cover time now. I wanted to show you all this hole right here. It doesn't seem to feed anything. And all that was in it originally was just a quarter inch pipe plug. And I am pretty sure this was the fill point for the AmpliTorque compartment. So I'll just leave this one loose for now. We won't seal threads or anything because I'll, I'll have it back out again. We'll take a look at the casting number real quick. This is a 10X, starts with a five and then they put the bolt hole through it. Looks like may have ended with a nine. We'll never know for sure what that is, but not important, I guess. So let's put it on. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to have a little bit of fun with my comment section because they have plenty of fun with me. So the last time I put all this black sealer to help out a gasket, you guys thought I'd forgot the gasket. Well, not everybody, about half a dozen people asked why I uh, neglected to put a gasket under the transmission top cover. It, it's there, it was just like this one here against that raw metal of the case that sealer does make them uh, blend in quite well so we have a gasket under the cover no need for anyone to become concerned so to plug the last of the openings on this compartment we'll put an oil level plug in over here and I think I've mentioned it before but I prefer to use new pipe plugs whenever possible when I'm doing a rebuild because you'll find these corners have been rounded or there's vice grip marks in them or the threads are just worn out. I will however make an exception for the drain plug. The one that's on the bottom of the AmpliTorque compartment. You look at this thing. It is pristine. I don't think a wrench has been on this more than two times its entire life. The first time was whoever put that plug in at Minneapolis Moline. The second time is when I took it out. Okay, probably around 2007. Oh, that poor compartment. It would not surprise me one bit if it had never been drained throughout the entire life of the tractor. Okay, everybody, I've got one last thing to do. There, flushed it out nice. I wanted to cork that hole because it had collected so much dirt and rust and, and water before. And of course this boss is not used. We've discussed it before. Uh, it's part of a mystery mechanism that was from another life on this tractor. But I look at things like this. You see this 3 16 hole that cuts just through the side. That means the shaft that went in would have had a groove cut in it and Minneapolis Moline probably would have compromised their principles and put a roll pin right there. I know they didn't really like roll pins, but that would have held that in because there would have been nothing on top of it. Hey, we're getting, we're going down the rabbit hole again, but we've got this entire transmission sealed up. I hope y'all can appreciate how much work went in from there to there because every 20 minute video is like a condensed version of the last three days. That's literally what this tractor takes. So. Next time, we'll start doing bell housing work. We have a clutch release yoke and a throw out bearing and a grease tube and all kinds of other fun things to put into place in there. So thank you again for watching everyone. Yeah, exciting times. We finally have that casting sealed up. Hope to see you all back again.